seven. Um, the message we're gonna learn tonight is called "Let Your River Flow." Let your river flow. Whoa. So we're saying, Abba Father, let your river flow. And we're also saying to ourselves, so let your river flow. Because there's a river that comes from heaven, this throne. Okay, and it flows down to us, his spirit, his living water. But then when we partake in that river, in that living water, it flows from our belly as well. Okay, so let your river flow, Abba Father. And let your river flow. Let the gifts that he has put in you flow out. John seven thirty eight. it says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, everybody say belly. Belly. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me. Who is talking here? Yeshua is talking. Jesus Christ the Messiah. He said, He that believeth on Jesus, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his inner being, out of his inner spirit, man, shall flow rivers of living water. Okay? So this is a prophecy. This is a promise. This is a something that the scripture hath said and Yeshua confirmed it he said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water everybody said rivers rivers out my belly out my belly when I believe when I believe so guess what when you believe on him rivers of living water shall flow from your belly the words of heaven will come from within you the words of heaven will come from within you. Okay? Proverbs 20, verse 5. Let's turn to Proverbs 20, verse 5. Write that down too. Proverbs 20, verse 5. This is another version of the river. Let's say it says, Counsel in the heart of man. Counsel. What is counsel? Advice. Okay? Wisdom guidance, direction when you need it. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, deep water, just like a river. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Okay, we need understanding to draw out the deep water, to draw out the counsel, deep, the deep water that comes from his spirit. Okay, so when we believe on him, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water, and when we have him inside of us, when we have wisdom inside of us, counsel in our heart is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw out that water, draw out that counsel. That means you can draw it out from yourself. You can pray and ask Yah to put in you the wisdom, and you can draw it out, pray it out. And you can go to others, say, hey, do you have wisdom? Do you have counsel on this? Do you have advice? In the multitude of the counselors, there is safety. There's a river that flows through the body, and we can have the river of heaven, we can draw out counsel from the river of heaven. Okay? We need understanding to draw it out. When you spend time with Yah in prayer and in the Word, something is going to come out. And we have to have confidence in that. Okay? The scripture says that um, He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. And so if you are seeking Him, if you are praying day and night, if you are praying and spending time with him, something is coming out. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. Ezekiel is having seen a vision of the temple. Okay, it said, Afterward he brought me again to the door of the house, 
and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from under from the right side of the house and the, at the south side of the altar. So there's a, he's seeing a vision of a temple. Okay, this is he's seeing a vision of the temple. Yah is showing him a vision of the temple, how it should be in heaven and how it should be on earth. It says, and he saw water coming out from the door. So in Yah's presence is a river of living water, a stream that flow out. Verse 2, then he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way to look at eastward. And behold, there ran waters, there ran out waters on the right side. Okay. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters. The, water were to, the waters were to his ankles. So from the temple, there was flowing out waters. There was a river. Okay. The waters were to his ankles. Then he measured a thousand and brought me to the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Okay, so a thousand cubits, it was to his ankles. A thousand more cubits, it was to his knees. And a thousand more cubits, it went to his loins, which is his core. Okay, like his, his core muscles, his stomach. Verse 5, afterward he, afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen. Waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over. First, so the waters got deeper and deeper. We're in Ezekiel 47, 1 through 5. In verse 6, he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the brink of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Verse 8, Then he said unto me, These waters issue out towards the east country, and go down to the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. Living waters, everything that comes into that water, everything that moves, wherever the river shall come, shall live. There should be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live, whether the river cometh. So wherever the river flows from the temple, everything is healed. There's healing in the living waters. There's healing in the river that flows from the throne of, of, of Abba, Father. Let's go to Revelations chapter 22. Uh oh. I don't even have it. I was worn out. <laughs> Revelation chapter 22. Write that down. Ezekiel 47. And then Revelations, Revelation chapter 22. Okay, so the prophet Ezekiel was shown the river that, that flowed from the temple. Now, in Revelation 22, we see the prophet, the apostle slash prophet, John. Okay, verse 1, it says, He showed me a pure river of water, of life, living water, water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Okay, so everything that touches the river lives. And the trees that are watered by the river grow fruit that are healing the nation. So that's how important the river is. That's how important the river of life is. That's how important the Holy Spirit is. That's how important when you pray, when you go to the throne in the morning, in the evening, and at noon. That's how important it is. It's life. Mm. The river is life. The river that proceeds from his throne, the river that proceeds from his temple, the rivers of living water that flow from your belly, that's your life. Mm. That's what heals you. Okay? That's what guides you. That's what counsels you. Okay, everything it touches is life. You want, like I say, all, all 
When we talk about witnessing, you want to know how to witness, how to preach the gospel? Just let it flow. <laughs> Whatever God told you that morning, tell somebody. Okay? You want to be a light? Just let the river that's already in you flow. Oh, this is what he's doing for me. Oh, this is what he did yesterday. Oh, this is what he told me this morning. Let it flow. That's the easiest way to be a witness. Everybody say, let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. Okay, when you spend time with Yah in prayer, in the Word, something is going to come out. You know, whenever we seek Him, there's something that happens. We never seek Him without getting a response. Anytime we do a fast, anytime we, we pray, anytime we set our hearts to seek Him, we hear something, dreams start coming, we start getting inspiration, we start singing new songs, it always happens. The river always flows. Okay? You cannot seek God in prayer or scripture diligently without getting something from Him. It's a guarantee. He said, well, if you seek Him, you shall find Him. Right? He even said in James, I believe, he said, um, if a man lack wisdom, let, let him ask of God who gives liberally and upbraideth not. And he said, let him ask, not with, don't let him ask with doubt, you know. If you don't believe, you know, you're going to be uh, unstable, let, wavering to and fro, right? If we seek him, we will find him. When we go to his throne, the river will flow. We have to understand that. We have to know that, okay? Because if we have understanding, we can draw it out. If we don't expect it and we don't know what the river is, we don't know what's at his throne. We don't know that there's a river that flows, you know, from his throne through our belly to give us counsel, to show us the right way, then we're not going to understand it. We're not going to receive it, okay? But the scripture says that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Okay? So we have to know that when we seek him, the river will flow. We have to have confidence in that river flowing. Okay? So let's seek him. Okay? When you seek him, you will find him. What will flow? Insights will flow. Understanding will flow. Inspiration will flow. Okay? Instruction will flow. Okay, write down those three eyes. Insight. Insight is wisdom. Counsel. Second eye is inspiration. When you just start, when you have a fresh flow of confidence or power. Inspiration. And then instruction. Instruction is when you take action. Oh, I gotta do this. Okay, it's not just about knowledge, it's about action. Insight, inspiration, <laughs> instruction. Okay, gifts of the Spirit, that's part of the inspiration. Wisdom of the Spirit, that's part of the insight. Power, actions, that's part of the instruction. He'll instruct you to do something. When you spend time with Him, the river will flow. It will be. It will flow in insight. It will flow in inspiration. It will flow in instruction. Okay. It will come in the form of knowledge. It will come in the form of emotion or or, or confidence in your soul. It will come in the form of action. I got. I'm gonna do this. I spent time in His presence. The spirit was willing, but the flesh is weak. But now I spend time in His presence, and bam. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to go. Okay? Action. Insight. Inspiration. Instruction. It'll come in knowledge. It'll come in emotion. It'll flow in action. Everybody say, let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. Okay? When you seek him, you will find him. Something will come. The river will flow, but you have to have confidence in that river. You have to have confidence in the instruction. You have to have confidence in the insight that came from him. You have to have confidence in the actions, the inspiration. 
Okay, you have to have confidence in the instruction, the inspiration, the insight that flows from the river when you spend time at his throne, when you spend time in his word. Let the river flow. Let it flow. Okay? If you get revelation when you read the scriptures, let it flow. Tell somebody about it. Write it down. Okay? If you get dreams that you can interpret, you ask God for insight, he gives you a dream, and you seek him for understanding, he gives the interpretation, guess what? Let it flow. Let it flow. Let the river flow. Okay? Let the insight flow. Let the dreams and revelations flow. Let the understandings flow. If you have songs that come into your heart day and night, sing it to him. Let it flow. Sing those songs. Write them down. That's part of the river. We have to let the river flow. We can't quench the spirit. We have to let it flow. We have to let the river flow, the Holy Spirit flow. If you prophesy, you have encouragement or knowledge or wisdom coming out of you when you pray. Let it flow. You have gifts of the Spirit. You have prophecies coming out of you. You have words of utterance. Let it flow. Okay? If you can, if you write down revelation and understanding when it comes to you, let it flow. If you seek, if you seek God, you pray, and all of a sudden you get knowledge and wisdom and revelation and, and understanding of things that you can write down, let it flow. Let your river flow. The river flows in different ways in different people. Okay? Everyone doesn't flow the same. Okay? When you seek him, you will find him. But sometimes the river flows different ways in different people. Okay? Sometimes people flow the same way. Sometimes people flow different ways. But guess what? Everybody, it flows for everybody. The spirit flows for everyone. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. Everybody say, let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. 1 Corinthians 12. We talked a little bit about this scripture last week. About everybody's not the same in the body. There's different parts, but we all need each other. Verse 28, it says, God has set some in the church or in the ecclesia, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Verse 29, it says, are all apostles? Are all apostles? No. 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 Are all prophets? No. Nope. Are all teachers? No. 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 Are all workers of miracles? No. Everybody, every single person, working miracles. No. Have all the gifts of healing? Everybody gets have a gift of healing? Nope. Do all speak with tongues? No. No. Do all interpret? No. Not everybody has the same gifts. The river flows different ways in different people. Okay. Tongues are awesome. Tongues are useful. Tongues are necessary, but it's not the only way to flow. The gifts flow in several different ways. The gifts flow through tongues and interpretation. The gifts flow through songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. The river flows through prophesying. The river flows through action, building what God has caused you to build. The river flows through the apostles, building. You know, the river flows through the all the gifts in there. The river flows through miracles. The river flows through all types of gifts. All types of utterance gifts. All types of ministry gifts. All types of power. Uh, the river flows. Okay? So does everyone flow the same? No. 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 But do we need everyone to flow? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need everyone to flow. It will be a beautiful symphony when everybody uses... The gift that God gives them. When everybody uses, when everybody lets their river flow. They spend time in the presence. They spend time in the scriptures. They receive. They have confidence in what they receive. And they let it flow. That's when the body is built up. That's when everybody uses their gift. And it's a beautiful symphony. Let's go to Matthew 23. Matthew 23.
Matthew 23, let your river flow. Let your river flow. When you seek him, you will find him. Let it flow. Let it flow out. Matthew 23, verse 34. It says, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. And some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. So he sent not just apostles. He sent prophets, people that speak the word. He sent wise men, people that do the word. And he sent scribes, people that write the word. They all flowed in different ways. The prophets were very verbal. It's preaching and singing and, and prophesying. The apostles were very action-oriented. Okay, we're about to do this. We're going to build this assembly. We're going to go here. We're going to build an assembly right here. We're going to preach the gospel here. Build an assembly right here. Set them up. And then we're going to go over here and teach them how to do the things the right way. We're going to set this. We're going to build this up exactly the way that Yahushua taught us. They flowed a totally different way. They flowed through action. They flowed through traveling. They flowed through building. Okay? Then we have the teachers, the scribes. They were writing, writing out the instructions. They remembered all the, all the stuff that Yahushua taught them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Let's write this thing out. Let's make sure we get all this down. Right? They wrote it down. They were scribes. Right? So we need everybody to flow in the exact way that the river flows. Let your river flow. Okay? Writers, speakers, and builders all need each other. Okay? <clears throat> so we have to let our river flow. What kind of gift comes out of you? What kind of gift do you hear from heaven? When you go to his throne and you pray, when you go to his throne and you worship him, when you open up your scriptures and you read, what type of river flows to you? Okay, use the gift, use the river, let the river flow through you. Go to his presence and let your, tell him, let your river flow. And then you, when you come back to your life, when you come back to earth and you then let the river flow through you. We never really leave his presence. The river is always at his throne and the river is always in our bellies. Okay, it's one river. Okay, we seek him, we go to his throne, but then also the throne is right here in our belly as because he's inside of us, right? Doesn't mean we're God, but it means that we seek him, yet he's inside of us. We seek him above the third heaven, his throne. But guess what? We are his temple as well. So that river that flows through the temple, that's the same river that flows through us. The river that flows at his throne, that's the same river that flows through us. So we have to understand it. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters, but a man of understanding shall draw it out. We can have a deep water, a deep well on the side of our house right out there and never dig and never draw it out, not even know it's there. What is in your belly that you don't even know is there? There might be something in your belly that y'all put inside you, you might not even know it's there because you haven't drawn it out, because you don't have understanding of it. Okay? There's deep waters inside of us. There's deep waters. If you spend, if you believe on him, as the scripture has said, okay, if you seek him, there's deep waters inside of you. There's a gift that can flow inside of you and basically run your life. There's a river that can lead you wherever you need to go and show you how to do it. There's a river that can feed you. There's a river that can give life to you. There's a river that can heal anything it touches. You and anybody you come in contact with. That river can do a lot. 
Right, but you have to have understanding of it. You have to draw it out. You have to have confidence in it. You have to let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. The songs that come from our daughter that she sings all the time. It gives us life. <laughs> we be walking around down. Liberty's out here. It's like just singing songs over and over again. I'm like, yeah, I got a river. We, we, we follow the, the river, right? Every one of our children have certain gifts, and we let it flow. We encourage them to let it flow. Every one of us has gifts that we need to let our river flow and build each other up. Okay? But let's be a doer. Be a doer of the word, not just a talker. Okay? The Bible says in James 1, 1 22, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Sometimes we can be so filled with the Holy Ghost and so in love with the river of his spirit, <laughs> but then still not obey his commandments, still not do what he says. Some people feel like the river or the gifts of God are their personal platform or stage, and we never want to turn into those type of people. They use his gifts for their vision, okay? Nothing is worse than a prophetic performer that's in love with their gifts, and they know how to flow with their gifts. They have understanding of their gifts, but they won't do his commandments. Oh man, there's so many. There's so many like that now. People that are very skilled and very in tune with their gifts that God has given them. They can write a song and put out a video and well, you know, it's a million a million views just like that. Mm -hmm. Using God's power, but on their second wife, third wife, committing adultery, promoting sin and iniquity. Okay, Jesus warned us about that. About people that prophesy, but work in iniquity at the same time. Matthew 7, verse 21, it said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, 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 Jesus is Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Singing about it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is the will and testimony of his Father? What is the will and testimony of Yahuwah? The Ten Commandments. The Testament which is in the Ark of the Covenant in heaven. Revelation 19, I believe it says that. Okay, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will and testament of my Father, which is in heaven. The ark of the testament is literally in heaven at this moment. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, same thing, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord, right? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that name? Well, we let that river flow. We prophesied day and night, okay? In that name, we cast out devils. Oh, yes, we used the power. The river flew, fl flowed through us, and we cast out devils. And in that name, done many wonderful works. Oh, we fill stadiums. We had this and that. We, we preached the gospel to, to tons and thousands of people in your name. And he will say, verse 23, Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why? Because they did not do his will. They did not do the will of his father. They did not do the commandments of God, even though they prophesied, even though they let that river flow. They, they were in touch with their gifts. They prophesied. They did all this stuff. They cast out devils. They had the power flowing. But they did not keep the commandments of the father. Okay? And they were workers of iniquity. Their gifts were flowing for their money. Their gifts were flowing for their vanity, their pride. Their gifts were flowing out of rebellion. Their gifts were flowing out of bitterness. Okay, their gifts were flowing to, to make a name for themselves. Their gifts were flowing so they could be seen. 
Okay? So many people say with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, Lord, but they won't do the will and testament of his Father, which is the Ten Commandments. They use the, excru- the excuse of freedom in Christ. Their gifts, signs, and wonders and great works to hide the fact that they are still motivated by iniquity, pride, rebellion, independence, lust, covetousness, doubt, fear, envy, vanity. A lot of people have prophetic dreams, visions, but they can't interpret them correctly because of the iniquity in their heart. Okay, a lot of people perform and prophesy for thousands and millions and lead people in worship, but their hearts are full of vanity, envy, competition, covetousness. Okay? Psalms 119, verse 2, it said, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Write that down, Psalm 119, verse 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. So you can seek the river and seek him with his whole heart, but you also have to keep his testimonies. You have to do what he already said. You can't be like, oh, I'm going to go to the river and get inspiration today from the Holy Ghost, but you won't keep the, the commandments that are written right there that was been here for, he told us about 4,000 years ago. Right? So you can't see, oh, I'm going to seek God's face and I'm going to get into the river and, and I'm going to let the living, living, living waters flow, but you won't open up your Bible and love your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Right? Verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. So we don't just need the river, we also need the commandments in order to be able to do no iniquity because the word washes us. The commandments wash from us from our iniquities. His ordinances wash us from our iniquities. His ways, right? They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Verse 4, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. How could you go to the throne and go to the river and try to get the river flowing in your life, but you're not obeying the commandments that came from that same throne? Okay, everybody say, we need the Word and the Spirit. We need the Word and the Spirit. We need the Word and the Spirit. We need the Spirit and we need the Word. We need to let the river flow. We also need to keep His testimonies with our whole heart. Do what He already said. Okay? Proverbs 28, verse 9. The infamous scripture <laughs> that people try to ignore. It says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Mm-hmm. That's the most ice cold mm-hmm. scripture in this. Almost <laughs> in the book. You turn away from your ear from hearing the law, even your prayer shall be abomination. But that's exactly what happens. We want to pray cry out to him, we won't do what he even said already. We won't even keep the law of God. So our prayer turns into a show. Our prayer turns into something where we just, just to say we pray, but we won't. It's like a one-way conversation. We're just, we're praying and we're seeking God and he keeps trying to pour out his spirit upon us, Mm -hmm. but we never get to the point where we actually obey what he said. And it eventually it turns into a show. Okay, but we want our prayer to be a conversation. Conversation is two-way. We pray to him and he tells us what to do. Mm-hmm. So if we're not doing what he said to do, and what we already know he said to do, it turns into a one-way conversation, which is an abomination. Okay, no amount of talking in tongues and singing is going to undo the damage done if we continually reject the commandments of the Father and the Son. We can't pray our way out of obedience. We can't let the river flow and then not keep the commandments of the Father and the commandments of the Son. But, I guarantee you, man, it's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful when the people that keep His commandments and obey His ordinances of the New Covenant also begin to pray day and night and let the river flows. That's when the power is going to be like the world has never seen. You get people that are keeping the commandments. Wow. Not confused. Not going back to Moses, but keeping the order of the new covenant. 
and seeking him day and night prayer letting the Holy Ghost flow letting the river flow healing letting the river of life flow and when you start to see the spirit and the word truly come together like that man it's going to be power manifesting it's going to be power manifesting in the earth okay Jesus is the way of holiness he is the truth of God and he is eternal life that's starting now he is the he is the uh, the entryway to the river he that believeth in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water so Jesus is the way of holiness. He is the truth. And he is eternal life. He is that river that flows. Okay? The highway of holiness. The river and the highway of holiness. <laughs> the highway of holiness is, is right next to that river. Okay? The Ten Commandments, the Gospel of the Kingdom, the Family Order, Assembly ordinances, house to house, house to house of prayer, leads us all to the new city of Jerusalem. Okay. The throne room is the source. The throne room of Abba Father is the source of the river of life. And if we flow with that river and we walk in his ways, we will be on the highway of holiness that leads us straight to the new city of Jerusalem. Because that same river that's inside of us is going to lead us to the new heavenly city and the new heavenly kingdom that throne. Okay? So everybody say, let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let the gifts that come to you when you pray and seek him, let it flow out of you. Say, Abba Father, let your river flow in me. Abba Father, let your river flow in me. If you believe in Jesus, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Be confident. Be confident in the gift that he's given you. Be confident in the spirit that flows through you. Be confident in it. Be confident. But also, make sure that you're not just a performer. Don't, per don't develop a performance attitude towards the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Okay, be a doer. Be submissive to his commandments. Be submissive to his ordinances. Be submissive to the order in your family. Be submissive to the order in the congregation. Walk in his ways. And keep his commandments. And then we will see amazing and beautiful things. And we'll be in the new city. And we'll we'll see that river. I say, hey, that's the river that was flowing through me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you. We pray. Let your river flow through us, Father, and let your river flow out of us. Hallelujah. Let us be the ones that flow in the river, that flow, that walk in the river, that jump in the river, that dance in the river, um, that let rivers of living water flow from our bellies, Father. Let us prophesy. Let us write. Let us speak. Let us sing. Let us do, let us act, um, not act as far as acting, but let us take action in obedience to your ways. Let us uh, lay hands on the sick, let them be healed, Father. Ali, let the river of life, let everything we touch be healed. Let everything we touch have life. Flow through us, Father. As we seek your, as we walk on the way of holiness, as we walk in the way, the truth, and the life, Father. Let us um, have the river your river of life flowing through us. In the name of Yahushua, we pray. Amen. Amen.